air conditioning and heating. That's what we're going to do today, solving with the optional method. Hi, my name is Craig Mashad and I am the electrical instructor. Today, we're going to go over heating and air conditioning. Using the optional method is different than using the standard method. So again, I've been asked numerous times, hey, can you do an optional method compared to the standard method? So this is my second video that's basically going to break down the heating and the air conditioning. There's a little bit more that we have to look into with the optional method than if we were to do it for just the standard method, but we'll talk about that. Okay, section 220.82 is what we're going to be discussing, the optional method. We talked about this in my first video. If you haven't seen it, click the link above, watch my first video showing you how to find the general lighting demand. The optional method and the standard method are two different types of calculations. One is looking for more of a breakdown with a standard calculation. The optional method is basically taking our calculation, adding a bunch together, coming up with a di different demand factors, and then coming up with a different solution. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and we're gonna discuss the heating and air conditioning because that's the next section after we solve for the general lighting demand, which again, like I said, if you haven't watched that video, go and watch that video. But what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna discuss the different parts. Air conditioning is gonna be the same. You're gonna take your compressor motor. If you have a blower or an air handler that is used with heating, you also have to calculate that just like you would in the standard method. In the optional method, you're gonna take the same information and you're gonna use the air conditioning at 100%. So, what will we do? So I'm going to do a calculation on the board. I'm going to show you solving for air conditioning. We're going to find the total VA for air conditioning. Okay. So on the board, I have two things. I have an AC compressor at 18.2 amps at 240 volts. I have a blower fan at 4.5 amps at 120 volts. Now, to find, total v, to, to find the VA of each, we're going to use basic Ohm's law. We're going to take the amps, multiply it by the volts, and that will give us what is our watts or VA. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to, we're going to go ahead and do this. My compressor is going to be 4368 VA. And then 4.5 times 120 is going to give me 540. Okay. So I add, the, I add the two together and it gives me a VA for AC at 4908. 4908 is taken at 100% according to 220.82. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to put it aside, and I'm going to compare the heating. So now that we've talked about AC, now let's talk about heat. Well, there's a few, there's five different sections that cover heat, and they're going to require different demand loads. What we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to discuss the two main calculations that we're going to use, the demand percentages that we're going to use. And it's kind of set up like this. If I have electric heat, if I have less, then four units, I'm going to take it at 65%. So with that being said, if I have four units or less, I take it at 65%. Now, with that being said, if I have more than four units, I'm going to take it at 40%. Hope you guys can see that. Okay. So with that being said, these, these are the two most common. Okay. So if you have electric baseboard heat in your house, if you have a, an electric furnace, you're going to have supplemental heating. Okay. So what's going to happen is if I have more heating elements, uh, that's going to be controlled and it's basically on control. Okay. So if I have, 
10 units, but I'm only controlling it by two thermostats, then I only have two heating units, okay? Um, if I have three and I'm controlling them by three separate thermostats, then guess what? They're going to be three units. If I have 12 units, but they're controlled by eight different uh, units or eight different thermostats, then they're eight differently separately controlled. That's going to be calculated at 40% rather than the 65%. I hope that made sense. If, if it doesn't make sense, leave me a comment down below. Uh, maybe I can explain it a little bit easier. Sometimes things get a little confusing uh, when we go through things like this. It's easier when you know somebody asks you a question and you can kind of go through the, you know, the, the explanation or the understanding or somebody may ask something. So it's kind of hard when you're doing something like this, but the, the two main things that we're gonna be using is if I have more than four units being controlled, if I have less than four units being controlled, then I know which unit I'm going to use. I'm either going to use a 65 for less than four. I'm going to use 40% if I have more. Okay. Okay. So in this dwelling here, I have three sections that are separately controlled and they're 4,000 watts each. So what do we do? Basic math, right? Multiply 4,000 by three gives us 12,000. Now, this type of unit has a blower motor. When we did the air conditioning, we had to consider that blower motor, which was 540 uh, watts. So this 540 watts is also going to blow heat through our house also, or our dwelling. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the 540 to this to give us 12 12,540. Once we come up with that, so I'm using the three heat, I'm using the blower motor, I add the two together, so I can take the 12,000, I take the 540 from the blower motor, I add them together, I get 12,540. Because there's three units, I'm gonna multiply that by 65%. Okay, so now that I have this set up, I'm gonna take the 12,540, I'm gonna multiply it by 65%, it's going to give me 8151. This is my VA for my heating. Okay, so just like everything else, now what I have to do is I have to decide which one I'm going to take. Well, obviously, whichever one is greater, that's what you're going to end up taking. And if you remember correctly, the 8151 is greater than. the 4908 uh, for the air conditioning. So again, depending on where you live in the States, that's gonna decide which one you're gonna use the most. In the next video, we're gonna wrap all of this up. We're gonna take the dwelling load from the first video. We're gonna take the air conditioning and heating load from the second video. The third video, we're gonna put it all together. Okay, we're gonna, I'm just going to kind of give you a breakdown of everything. If you haven't watched the breakdown of a standard calculation, the playlist is up here somewhere. Go ahead and watch that. Okay, so I hope you got a good understanding on the optional method and how to find the heating and the air conditioning. Again, the rules change. So we have to remember that no matter what we do, we have to remember what option we're looking for. Are we looking for a standard method? Are we looking for an optional method? The method is what is going to decide. Now, if you were taking your license exam, it's going to specify standard method, optional method, single family dwelling. I'm going to do more videos, multifamily. I'm going to do the standard method. I'm going to do multifamily, the optional method. I'm going to do non-dwelling stuff, going over restaurants and schools in time, okay, in time. I hope this video helped. We just wanted to go through, I, I just wanted to go through and show you how to find the air conditioning and the heating for the optional method. It's important you understand the difference between the two because when you take your license exam, you are going to be asked questions based on the optional method and based on the standard method. You got to know which one you're using. With that being said, 
I hope you like this video. If you like this video, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. Again, I can't thank you enough. My subscribers, you guys watching my videos, the great comments I get, I get on a weekly basis. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. But if you're watching this video for the first time, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell. This way here, you can stay up to date with all the different things we're doing. We're gonna do one more video on the optional method, and then I'm planning on doing some more videos on some pipe bending, uh, bringing in a Chicago bender into the mix, showing how to use a Chicago bender. So if you haven't subscribed, do me a favor, smash that subscribe button, ring the bell, so you can stay up to date on those videos. As always, have a great day and be safe.